Okay, Wait, audio I think is working now, um, which is great because I I was just blabbering before. Um, so this is a talk I'm giving soon, and I'm gonna run through it. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. Um, All right, we're good to go um, for this unfinished presentation. Doot, doot. All right. Um, the theme song for Angel stuck in my head earlier, but you couldn't hear me whistling it, so that's good. Um, Okay, let's get started. So this is, um, if you were here for the, what was it, the the great um, series of talks that Alex put together a few weekends ago, um, you've already seen bits of this. Um, but we're going to talk about using how your terminal works and how to use it, um, specifically with examples in Python. Um, let's get started here. Um, thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of nervous about PyCon. I'm also nervous about Tomorrow, in theory, I'm giving this at a local user uh, group, um, but I have all day tomorrow to like actually get the slides ready for it. All right, let's go ahead. So terminal whispering, um, and can you see the right thing? Yes. Um, right, it's not done yet. Um, interesting. So that's good to know. When load is high, these transitions don't look very good. Um, gosh, that probably means my audio is not going to be good is either. All right, well, honestly, this isn't really for all of you, is sort of from me. But uh, so what are terminals? What are we talking about when we say terminals? Where are my speaker notes? Here they are. Um, when I have this up, can you still see? Yes, you're fine. Um, well, first off, when we're talking about terminals, we're usually talking about terminal emulators. Let me scope this talk a little bit. I'm, I'm going to be talking about you know Unix terminals, um, not the thing you, yeah, not the command line thing you have in Windows, um, although bits of the design stuff will will correspond. So what, what am I talking about terminals? I'm not talking about any of these things. These are other things associated with the word terminal. I don't mean these. Um, and in the real thing, I'll give credit to Jason Davies for this little word cloud thing. Um, when I say terminal, I'm usually talking about a terminal emulator like this. Um, I'm going to say a terminal emulator pretends to be the thing that an application thinks it's talking to. Um, what the application thinks it's talking to is an interactive, well, so an interactive command line program um, is when it writes bytes, it's going to assume that those are you know, probably going to a terminal. Since, there we go. Um, since, all right, we said this is a terminal emulator. So let's talk about what we're emulating. Um, these, these are basically what we're emulating. These are video terminals. Um, if you're running you know, a command line program, you're probably anticipating that the user is sitting in front of one of these things. Um, but these are already kind of emulating something else. Um, originally, they were emulating uh, these things, which I'm going to call teleprinters or teletypewriters. Um, you can spend a lot of time, you can kill a lot of time on YouTube watching videos of these things. They're really awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, they are, you know, mechanical marvels of the last century, sort of. So we've, we've had these things for a long time um, in some form. Um, we've had telegraphs, as I understand it, like for 100. Well, we've had machines that work like this, I think, for 100 years. Um, at least this teletype thing's been around for 100 years. Um, But these terminal emulators are really inspired by these things, right? How can I get it so I can see this? All right. Um, and here's this cool little ad. And once again, I would read this to you if I didn't feel like reading a slide is sort of not a great thing to do in a presentation, but I think it's great. Um, so I actually will read a little bit of it. Uh, the idea was that it was a typewriter that sent its stuff you know, across the world to talk to something. We don't know what. Maybe originally with it, the telegraph stuff, it was a human operator, and then we just repurposed that equipment and sent it at computers instead. 
Uh, so let's look at this kind of model we're going to use for how these things talk to each other. Um, so with one of these teletypewriters, um, we have fingers that are pressing keys, and those key presses get physic like I'm going to say sent, but they're like right a piece of metal comes up and hits um, this on a real typewriter, hits the, the page, um, and one of these teletypewriters, you hit the button, and it's actually going to print that letter probably, right? We're going to put ink to paper for that. Um, but we're also going to send that signal, and I'm calling it signal over a metal wire here because I don't know anything about how this works, and that eventually information gets to our application. Um, there's obviously some stuff that happens in between there because when we write our code, we don't have to interpret, um, or at the time, they, I don't think they had to interpret like a series of like on-offs in the wire. Um, so... I'm not going to say bytes yet. They're just signals somehow. And then it got the application, and then the application can send some stuff out over a wire. And I'm guessing that maybe the wire is made of copper. Um, once again, there are awesome YouTube videos that talk about how these work for telegraph machines. Um, okay, but now let's look at our kind of modernized version of this diagram, which is this. Now on my computer, I have key presses. Um, when I make key presses, they get sent to this terminal thing. Um, I have a display that the terminal is kind of constantly updating, right? It knows what my terminal should look like, and it puts it to the screen. Um, and we have system calls like read that read bytes from the terminal, and we get them in our application. And we have write, which writes bytes out. Um, Got to fix this diagram. Gram read. Was I missing a paren there? Returns bytes. Also need to rejigger this so I can actually see the comments. Great. Um, so the way that we read is that we read on this file descriptor called standard in, which is kind of hooked up such that it's getting stuff from the terminal and we write bytes out and they're gonna be displayed there. Um, in Python, since this is a talk for PyCon, um, we are gonna get you know, in Python 3, we get stuff from the terminal with input um, or raw input in Python 2 and with the print function um, for sending stuff back out. Um, now, you can see this is a very simplified diagram um, where there's a lot of stuff happening in here that we can't see um, or that, that isn't showing up here. But I've included the terminal, right? Why don't I just say, oh, key presses go to the application, and when you print, it goes to the screen? Well, because key presses also cause things to be displayed, right? When I press a key in my terminal, it, yes, it, the application gets it eventually, but also immediately it shows up on the screen, okay? And um, messages that are sent might result in other things than displaying text. So there are messages I can send from the application with print that don't actually end up displaying text on the screen. Um, we'll look at input in a moment, but for now, let's look at what happens when we write to the terminal. Um, oops. Okay. What bytes can we write and what happens? So we're just going to look at this path. Application writes bytes to the terminal. Um, what bytes can we send? Well, let's start with ASCII bytes. ASCII is the standard that we came up with in, uh, I thought I had this written down, but it's like long ago. Maybe it's on the next slide like I want to say 60s, um, we can write stuff like this in Python 3. We can um, also write control characters. Um, so let's look at an ASCII chart to remind us what, what these things mean. Um, if you've got an ASCII chart, um, so there are 128 right, different ASCII signals you can send. Um, some of them are pretty normal characters, right? They are things that send, when you send that thing, that is what's going to appear on the screen, right? pretty direct. But we also have some stuff where when you send a signal, that's not what's actually going to show up. Um, so let's look at, let's set up a little example and you can follow along at home. Um, what I'm going to do here is get two terminals here. Um, in one of them, I'm going to run this program called netcat, which is going to sit there and receive, it's going to print everything that it hears on a socket. It's going to listen on one, two, three, four. Um, and then in here with Python, um, I'm going to import socket, make a socket, 
connect to not to Google but to uh, local host on port 1234 and I'm going to send some bytes. I'm going to send an ASCII byte. Oh, I accidentally opened Python 2 instead of Python 3, so we'll do the examples in Python 2. Um, so I don't have to specify bytes, but I will for, remind ourselves that we're really sending bytes here. Um, so if I send this, um, it totally doesn't work because send is not a thing, but um, if I say s.send, um, and the goal is to not live code at all for the real thing, but I don't have good demos set up yet. Um, right, this send an A over there. Cool. Um, we can do lowercase a. We can do like, other things from that ASCII chart. Uh, but there's some bytes we can send. So like from the ASCII chart, something like 66 here was, that looks like it's lowercase f. 60 is, oh, 61 is going to be lowercase a. Um, 31 maybe is going to be, whoops, off by one, 21, 26. I'm hoping to get into the uppercase numbers, but I'm having trouble finding them. Um, I'm sorry, I meant uppercase letters. 37, 49, all right, somewhere there's uppercase letters and lowercase letters. Oh, here are the uppercase letters, cool. Lowercase is probably a little higher up. 41 is A, great. But there's some other bytes we can send. What if we sent um, the byte, um, byte seven, let's try. Um, see that, it blinked, right? So if you try this at home, you're gonna get that bell sound. Um, next one we could send, so in Python we have a shorthand for this and it's slash A. Um, what if we were to send a new line? Uh, we, we know what to expect from this, right? It's going to go down to the next line. Um, but that's a control signal, right? That's saying it's a special signal that we're sending that moves it down. Um, if we write some more stuff and then we send a carriage return, we're going to go to the beginning of that line. And we can actually overwrite the bytes there. Yeah, so I can say, hi, and we overwrite that. Um, let's send something else that's interesting. I'm going to send a f i don't know what one that is but look it moved the cursor down so that's kind of interesting um, i'm going to send some bytes and i'm going to send b for like backspace look at that i can backspace over things and i could write new text all right so we can already we're already sending interesting things that aren't just the normal ascii characters all right so let's pop back to our ascii diagram we can see some of the stuff that we were sending there um, so we've already seen an example of sending stuff that isn't just literally transcribed on the terminal. Um, oops. Next up, um, if the terminal is using an encoding, we can send several bytes to make a character. Um, so terminals can have encodings set on them where when you send several bytes, we, so say I were to send these bytes, for example, um, out would pop a like, fancy character um, that would look like this. Um, in Python, we can standard out has an encoding attribute on it, and so we can actually send Unicode and it will encode it via that encoding. Um, I think we don't need demos of that. Um, next up, we can send ANSI escape sequences. Um, now we're into stuff historically that doesn't make sense with typewriters anymore. Um, that we're now talking about um, or we're into the 80s, basically. Um, so late 70s, early 80s, we start to have video terminals like these things um, doing kind of more interesting things. You can send control characters to something that will move the cursor around. Um, and it's ANSI, they were kind of non-standard for a bit. Um, so we actually had, oh, that's too bad that this isn't, I'll see if this works. Oh darn, the S uh, doesn't work yet. Um, I 
really? Okay. So I guess this doesn't work yet. Um, so here are some of the ANSI escape sequences, but the interesting going on thing going on was for a bit we had we had the equivalent of browser wars, right? Browser wars were when there were several different browsers, or still are, um, and someone adds a feature to their browser or has a little quirk or something. Someone adds the blink tag, say, right? So um, Mosaic, the early Firefox precursor, adds blink. Um, and then somebody implements, you adds Blink on their website, and then users try to go to that website, and it works in Mosaic, and it doesn't work in other things. And they're like, man, Mosaic's better than the other browser. And so um, Internet Explorer wasn't around, but if it was, it has to go on. No, maybe it is. It is around. Um, I don't know my browser history, but some other browser is like, great, we have to implement that thing too. Um, so we have these inconsistent different browser or terminal, video terminals. So this is hardware that people are selling. Um, and they need to kind of emulate each other and they need to add different things. And eventually they said like the W3C committee, they're like, all right, let's standardize this shit. Let's like figure out what each series of bytes should do. Um, like the WC3 is, is like, all right, well, let's figure out exactly what this JavaScript method does. And so we can agree and so they can just all work. Um, yeah, it was an interesting Blink story. Um, if I'm going to mention that, I should probably find out what it is <laughs> or, um, uh, but right, the browser wars are like when people had these different things. We had similar wars, and we decided on standards. So you can do stuff like this. Um, now, I'm also going to have a demo of this, but it's not going to be live coded um, because I think the live coding takes too long. Um, and it's too error prone, basically. Um, but this is interesting stuff. Look, you can move the cursor to a spot, and you can hide the cursor. You can say, start writing in bold, start writing in red. Now, this is actually important enough that we should, we should try a demo of this. Um, Let's switch back here. Um, so interestingly, we can send stuff like slash x1b, which is right, this is byte, I don't know, um, whatever hex of x1b is. What's ord of this? Um, 27. All right, so if you send byte 27, um, back, maybe let's do that, s.send um, chr of 27 plus open square bracket plus uh, 32m, right? Nothing appears to happen, right? It looks like nothing happened over here. Um, but when I send some more letters, now they're in green. So the important thing about this is that our terminals have state now, right? Like I put it into the state where it's like, oh, I'm writing in green now. So these terminal editors, this stuff doesn't make sense on typewriters anymore, but it made sense in those video terminals. Um, I don't know a lot of others of these, but there are other colors that we can send, right? So let's pop over to our presentation, right? So there's this different stuff. You can go look up what some of the other ones are if you want. Um, what other bytes can we send? Well, so those are all the different things we can send. Now, the way we ought to do this, it, because those wars still aren't really over. Um, well, the wars are, but there's still incompatibilities. Um, it's pretty standard with these ANSI escape sequences, but there are some terminals that don't work like this. So you ought to use a compatibility layer, like add talk about compatibility here. Oh no, what stopped? The stream stopped. Okay, it's back. All right. Um, <laughs> Anybody watching, feel free to not watch <laughs> because there are going to be stream issues because I'm streaming from home instead of work and there are going to be... Anyway, but I really appreciate that you're watching and feel free to interrupt at any point with um, comments. Um, yeah, oh, it sucks that you can't, uh, can't put links in there. I agree. Um, but Alex, I appreciate you watching. You're awesome. Um, okay, so here's where I'm also going to add like the right way to do the stuff we were just doing, which is basically to use a library called Curses, which is in the standard library. And then I'm gonna talk about how Curses is kind of annoying and we're gonna use Blessings instead. And we're gonna quickly introduce features of these and I'll show code samples. And I will quickly show the demonstrations before, but here's where I'm gonna actually have code on the slides that shows how awesome Blessings is um, and how you would do this with Curses, um, but only the output things. Because next up is what happens when the user types the keyboard? Question mark. What happens if the user types at the keyboard? Well, you have key presses. They are sent to this terminal. 
um, they seem to kind of stay there, right? Like when you call re, you don't get it until they hit enter. Um, so here by terminal, I really mean terminal plus stuff the operating system is doing. Um, anyway, so it's just going to hold stuff there for a bit. Um, and then also when I type, it immediately shows up in the terminal before the application gets the data. So in this diagram, we have the screen shown here as well. Um, let's look at this a bit. Um, first off, right, there's buffering. When I'm typing stuff in the terminal, um, when I hit enter, the application can get it from a read call. But before that, it doesn't, it doesn't get that information yet. Um, there's this thing called the line editing discipline, which is shared, very basic code of editing I can do essentially while before the application gets this at all. Um, I can backspace, I can delete a word, and I can delete the line, and that's about it. I can reprint the line. There's not much I can do. Um, and this is called the line editing discipline. It's actually part of the kernel where these bytes are stored in a buffer in the kernel, and every time Every time I hit a key, it's just kernel code running. So we send in the signal, the kernel gets it. It's like, great, I don't have to switch into user space to deal with this, um, at least traditionally, I don't. Um, I can do this stuff myself. So there's actually kernel code that implements, like, ah, add this to the buffer. Um, oh, the, one of the users wanted to like go back, a, you know, delete a character. We can do that for them. So this is all before the application gets the code at all. Um, all right. Now, what if we don't want to like have that editing be the, the echo behavior when I type a key and it immediately shows up? Um, we talked about that um, backspace that those work. Um, you can see this in Python if you like move your read line library, um, then you won't have read line working anymore, which is a kind of user space thing that's happening. Um, and instead, you actually get to see the kernel line discipline stuff. Um, or use something like cat, I think, doesn't use read line. So if you like type cat and then try to delete stuff in there, you will find that, I'm pretty sure cat, you just use read line, right? That'd be crazy. Yeah, so if you're in terminal, you just type cat, find out if cat uses read line, this next task. If cat uses read line, I'm sure it doesn't, that'd be ridiculous. Um, you can see this line editing discipline stuff. Um, but we can actually change the behavior of our terminal because our previous diagrams were a little bit long. So echoing back characters thing. We actually have a way to modify how the terminal works. Um, we could, some of the calls, there's like IO, CTRL, there's, what is it, FN, function FN, TCRL, like list ways. There, we actually have knobs. We can set and get attributes on our terminal. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, it's got it's ridiculous. Um, thanks, Alex. Uh, so we can modify and get state about the terminal um, using commands. Now, the, the one we probably want to know about is called STTY. It's a command line program that it kind of wraps this stuff for us. Oh yeah, FCNTL. I don't know how to pronounce these. Find out how to pronounce these. How to pronounce these? Um, so you can turn off echo with these these knobs, and basically, I'm just going to show quick examples of code that I don't have now. Um, this is like how to do it with STTY. It shows that get pass is a thing that does this. Um, context managers would be great because it's a Python talk. Um, so for this kind of stuff, we probably I'll show the code for doing it the manual annoying way, which I do in some of my libraries, but we, won't, we should be using blessings instead. It's cooler. Um, so echoing back characters is a thing we can turn on and off. Um, cursor query, got to figure out, either take that out or show a better example of that. This is good. The timing's working out all right with this presentation, so that's good. <laughs> All right, one final way we have of communicating. The terminal sends us signals. And by terminal here, I guess I mean terminal on the device driver and, and um, the TTY. But we get signals from our terminal. Like if you send control C, the application doesn't actually read a control C character, even though there's, there's a character that could be, right? There's an ASCII byte for that. Um, it actually gets a, like you have to write a signal handler to deal with that. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's like the import signal in Python. Um, 
And again, you can use your knobs. You can you do this modification of a terminal to decide when signals get sent. Um, one an example of this is when you change the size of the terminal, a signal gets sent to the application to say, hey, the terminal size changed. And then you can do your, you know, find out what it is now. Um, what happens when the user types to the keyboard? Right, signals, we did that, okay. And here's where we're gonna put content about, um, yeah, none of this stuff needs to be there. Hierarchy of different sequences, that's already covered that. Yeah, tools. We're gonna spread these throughout the talk instead. Um, and then I'm gonna have demos of like, look at these cool things really fast. And the way this is gonna be useful to people is that um, through the talk, and we'll be like, here's an example of how you do, you know, cool stuff that are people, the reason people came to talk. So here's how to do your progress bar when we get to the slash R. Here's how to do um, getting input for a game on keystroke. Here, that's the non-blocking stuff. Um, and I'll check the abstract and see what else I said would be in it. Um, yeah, random cool stuff for the reading. Okay, that's it. That's 25 minutes, which is the amount of time. I have a little bit more than that, but all right. Thank you, everyone. That's kind of all I've got. Thanks for watching, Alex. That that was very helpful informational support and emotional support there. Um, I will let you all know how this goes. Um, I'm giving it tomorrow night, and but it'll actually be done by then. I've just kind of been putting it off and then not done it at work because sometimes it doesn't feel like work, even though it totally is work. Um, so that's the plan to do tomorrow. Um, thanks a lot. I will let you know how this goes. And there's going to be an amazing talk at PyCon. It's going to be so good compared to this stuff. All right, thanks a lot. I will turn this off somehow.